what I believe a parent really can give their children that's most beneficial is a, a model of that connected, I'm being guided by my inner knowing. And that might look like being really clear with your boundaries, that I'm the guide in this scenario. I have to keep us safe saying, you know, sweetheart, I get you want to climb that tree and I'm starting to feel wobbly. So I'm going to ask you to come down because I'm not sure if you're safe. Mm -hmm. If you're going to teach somebody how to be boundaried and can really driven by their inner knowing, you have to model that a lot. You have to speak that language. What most of us do when we get dysregulated and when we feel that wobble is we go straight up to our head and we try to change something out there versus coming inside and doing the work to shift what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. And to me, the work that you guys are sharing is really speaking to the fact that the, the inner knowing, we've lost touch with that for many of us in our, you know, in the way we've been parenting in the last however long in, in Western civilization, mm -hmm. a lot of the, um, a lot of what happened was it led people to be outward focused. I better be this for you. Oh, you like it when I'm like this. Oh, you seem to be okay when I act this way. So really early on, you learn not to listen. Mm -hmm. And so you get these voices in your head that are other people's voices. And when you're upset or when you're frustrated or angry, we don't automatically go, oh, wow, I'm having a dysregulated moment. Look at me wobbling. I better steady myself. Compassion, compassion. We go out, right? We go out and blame. You're making me feel this way. Or we go in and start berating and feeling guilty or shameful or embarrassed or wrong. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I can help parents return to themselves, they're going to relate to the growing people differently and we're going to kind of unkink that kink that seems to have gotten in our way. That the little, the growing people will be more connected to their emotions and use it to know themselves better mm -hmm. and over time be able to manage them exquisitely. And, and to me, that comes from both modeling it of like, hey, love, I checked in with myself and that's not feeling good right now. So I'm going to have to put a boundary on this. And then they feel the feelings mm -hmm. and you reflect, wow, you're really upset. I get it. Uh, and then also really over and over and over and over asking, hey, how does that feel? Hey, when you look at screens for a while, how does your body feel? helping them really check in, check in, check in. How does that feel for your body when you get up that high? How does it feel for you when you eat those foods? Mm -hmm. Because that's gonna teach them how to know because you don't want a person looking out there for everybody to tell them, am I okay or am I not okay? And if you find yourself being somebody who want, like you, you have an impulse to say no and keep the container really tight, then I would recommend like, well, let me look at that. Let me look at why I get so anxious because it has an origin in something. And you might figure it out and go, yep, I'm still cool with that, go for it. But if you realize, oh, when I was little, people said, be careful a lot. So I don't really trust myself or them and I'm afraid something bad's gonna happen. Then there's compassion. And then you get to experiment with trying on different ways of being. And that to me is the, the work, the growing work, because they're here to do their thing and they don't know our world at the moment. You know, I mean, there's cars and there are things that we know are inherently dangerous that their wiring hasn't given them an, enough experience with yet. So again, being the guide, if, if I went to a different country and I didn't know the customs, I would hope that people would keep me close for a while, but then let me start exploring pretty quickly to have experiences on my own so I could feel that and then ask me to come back and check in and talk about it and say, well, how was that? Ooh, that was interesting. I saw you jump a little when that particular person walked by. What were you noticing? Mm -hmm. Versus like, don't talk to any strangers. Like there's no information in that for later in life, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, I joke that parents often say, well, I want you to be super assertive out there, but at home I want you to listen. I'm like, who wouldn't want that? But you don't get both. 
Um, so there's a lot of navigating and negotiating and conversation in that. And then as they get into teenhood and young adulthood, I just see a, a different quality of self-assurance and steadiness mm -hmm. where they don't look out there for who they are as much as they know who they are or they're aware of wanting to know more of who they are, that they launch into adulthood far less concerned about out there and much more connected to in here. Mm -hmm.